Okay, we're in uh, section 50 of the notes now. And by that, we're going to go through the same rigmarole we're always doing, right? Talking about you getting busy reading the contents. Um, I will cover the examples. And then you got to get busy with the exercises. Uh, my name is Ron Bannon. This is a draft version of my um, adaption of Webster Wells's advanced course in algebra, which dates back to 1904. The Prison Mathematics Project participants have access to the PDF, and the PDF will be published at a later date. And if you do need to reach out to me, uh, my my name again is Bannon. And my email address is also just like that: Bannon, B as in boy, the at symbol, N N O N. Dot us, all right. So what's the content going to be? We'll scroll through it. Um, it's going to be you know quadratic equations, all right. So my goal over here is to you know certainly encourage you to read through it, but then you know I kind of distill what he's saying, and he says a lot. There's no doubt about it. Goes through some examples, talks about different methods. You know I'm going to just go through it, all right. This is section fifty, and you know certainly I'm going to talk through it now. All right, so the first thing I noticed that over here, I'll point this out to you. They start talking about per perfect squares. All right, they're numerical squares. The next thing they talk start talking about is the squares of these simple binomials, like x plus 1, x minus 1. There's a definite pattern to these, and you should study that pattern. I'm going to point it out to you. If I look at the one here, it's half of this squared. Half of this squared. What's half of 4 squared is 4. Half of minus 4 squared squared is 4. Half of 6 squared is 3. That would be 9 when I square it. Half of minus 6 minus 3 when you square it, 9. Half of the 8 is 4. When you square it, you get 16. Half of minus 8 is minus 4. When you square it, you get 16. Half of 10 is 5. When you square it, you get 25. Half of minus 10 is minus 5. When you square it, you get 25. Half of 12 is 6. When you square it, you get 36. There's a very simple pattern here. Half of minus 12 is going to be minus 6. When you square it, you get 36. All right? So I'm going to say over there, it's a real simple pattern. So it's going to, how would you complete the square in this one over here? Well, if you did that, what would you do? x squared minus 14x. Half of minus 14 squared. What does this give you? Minus 7. When you square that, what do you get? 49. What do you have here? Plus 49. That's completing the square. What's the square going to be? x minus 7 quantity squared. You could, of course, check that. Pretty simple to do. All right. So this method, you know, I'm going to say it's a simple method. It's completing the square. Let's talk about it. And we want to complete the square in this one over here. And I want to follow the what they're asking me to do. So let's point out what they're asking me to do. They're giving me an equation. And for me to do this problem, they're doing it by completing a square. So number one says isolate the constant. So what does that mean? I have to add or subtract the constant from both sides. So I'm hoping you realize that what I get over there, I would subtract 200 from both sides. I get x squared plus 30x equals minus 200. The next thing I do is I've got to find the constant that will complete the square. And I've got to add that to both sides. Let me go through that with you. So you're going to get, let's write this down for you, x squared plus 30x equals minus 200. What do I do? Half of 30 and square it. What's half of 30? 15, right? And what's 15 squared? Well, I'm just going to put down 15 squared. We'll do that later. I'm going to have 15 squared to this thing over here. Well, this side's really easy. When I say this side, the left side is just x plus 15 squared. I should do the arithmetic on the right side. And 15 squared is 225 minus 200 plus 225 is 25. Now what we're going to do is a square root rule. All right, let me point out what the square root rule is. If we have something that's being squared, there's something that's being squared, and it equals a number, this something is going to be plus or minus the root of that number. All right, let's just use that rule now. I'm going to erase this here, and let's use the rule. What do you get? Let's write this down. x, whoops, sorry about that. x plus 15 equals plus or minus, give me one second, plus or minus the root of 25. 
what do you have here? x equals, I can subtract 15 from both sides, plus or minus, the square root of 25 is 5. So we get two numbers. What are the two numbers? Well, minus 15 plus 5 is minus 10, or minus 15 minus 5 is minus 20. Now, i got to be honest with you. If I were asked to solve this equation over here, I don't think I would have done that. What I would have done, I would have factored. X and X. Not that it always works, but I'd like to try it. And 200, I'd say 10 and 20, because I see 30 in the middle. And I'd say plus, plus. What solution? That, that's correct factorization, by the way. X equals minus 10, or X equals minus 20. All right, so let's keep moving. And they talk about deriving the quadratic formula now by completing the square. All right, so I'm going to do that for you. And the first thing I'd like to do is, you know, kind of looking at it, I get a little bit differently than they've done it. And the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it differently than the way that they did it here. But you can read that. What I'm going to do is, when I complete the square, I like the coefficient on the square term to be 1. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide through by a. And what do you get? x squared plus b over a x plus c equals 0. All right? So I like this form, actually. So what's my first step? Isolate the constant. So what's constant? Whoops, I made a mistake here. I forgot to divide this thing by a. By the way, 0 divided by a is 0. But I, you know, I need to isolate the constant. I'll write this down for you. And this would be minus c over a. Whoops. That's a. I'm going to complete the square now. What's that going to be? I'm going to take half of the coefficient of the x term and square it. What do you get? b squared over 4a squared. So let me write that down for you. So plus b squared over 4a squared. And I got it to the other side, too. So it's going to be plus b squared over 4a squared. Well, the left side's really easy to do. What's well, going to be x plus b over 2a squared. The right side's kind of complicated. It's 4a squared. It's common denominator. You would get b squared minus, well, I got a common denominator, 4a squared, so it's 4ac, right? Use the square root rule now. I'll write that down for you. So x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus. Well, let's be really careful here. What are you going to get? The root of b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. All right? Now, th this, this might seem a little outrageous to you, but let's just go for it. b over 2a plus or minus, whoops, I forgot the equal sign there, didn't I? My eraser out. Plus or minus, well, the top is just simply the root of b squared minus 4ac. Now, the bottom's a little more complicated, but the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of a squared is actually the absolute value of a. But what do I notice about it? I got the plus or minus sign over here, so I'm not going to worry about that. I, uh, I got something pretty simple now. What do you get? x equals... Common denominator is 2a. What do you get? Minus b plus or minus the root of b squared minus 4ac. All right? Again, they did a little bit differently, but that's quadratic formula. I don't like the quadratic formula. What I'm going to do is basically try to do these problems the way I've always been doing them. All right? And, and, and since I've been doing them, I try to factor. All right? So let's take a look at this one over here. If I were looking at that one over here, just this number 1, I'd solve for 0. And well, I'd try to factor. And what's nice about factoring this over here, it doesn't look difficult. Let's say I can't, maybe I can't do it, but it doesn't look difficult. So 3x times x, that's not so bad. I think I say 2 and 2. Minus, minus. Let's see if that's right. 3x squared. Minus 6x minus 2x minus 8x. Yeah, it works beautifully. So what's the answer over here? Well, 3x minus 2 becomes 0 when x is equal to 2 thirds. Or x minus 2 becomes 0 when x is equal to the number 2. All right? Let me sharpen my pencil. It's getting weak. All 
I do see those answers here, by the way. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is by completing the square. To me, it's a lot more work, but the bottom line, it can be done. Let's write this down for you. So 3x squared minus 8x equals minus 4. A lot of students bog down here. Before I do anything, though, what I want to do is I want to make everything that needs to be a square a square. So this is the problem for a lot of students. By the way, the work is over here. So making everything squares, like that 3x squared, is really not a perfect square. What I'm going to do instead, though, is I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So I'm going to do something different. And Wells would not do this either, by the way. Okay, what are we going to do? Half of the 8 minus 8 thirds and square it. I'm write this down. Well, the half of that would be 6, right? Square it. i got to simplify that. What do you get over there? 4 thirds squared. Yeah, when you square a negative, you have a positive number. 16 ninths. And again, for me, it's a lot of work. Perfect square. What do you get? X minus 4 thirds squared. Let's look at this over here. Common that would be 9. You would get 4 ninths. X minus 4 thirds would equal plus or minus the square root of 4, which is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. Well, it looks like it's working out pretty nicely. What do you get over here? 4 thirds plus or minus 2 thirds. What is that going to give you? Well, 4 plus 2 is 6 thirds. Or 4 minus 2 is 2 thirds. What does this give you? 2 or 2 thirds. Are we getting those answers? Of course we are. So that's another way of doing it. All right? So I, I like the factoring. I want to claim there's another way to do it. And you could use a quadratic formula. I'm going to write that down for you. And that's going to be 3x squared uh, minus 8x plus 4 equals 0. A is 3. B is minus 8. And C is 4. Let me use quadratic formula. And again, this is written in your notes. The opposite of the B is 8 plus or minus. And a long root there. The b squared is going to be 64 minus the 4 times the a times the c. Well, 4 times a is 12, and 12 times 4 is 48. Let's keep going. The bottom is going to be twice a, which is 6. x equals 8 plus or minus. 64 minus 48 is going to be the root of, let's see, that would give you 16, right? Over 6. x equals... 8 plus or minus, square root of 16 is 4, over 6. Again, it's a lot of work. x equals, let's see, 8 plus 4 is 12, over 6, or 8 minus 4, which is 4 over 6. What do you get here? x equals 2, or 2 thirds. Are we getting the same answer? Yeah, we're getting the same answer every single time. What's the least amount of work? If you can factor, factor. What's the most amount of work? Could be completing a square, or it could be the quadratic formula. But they all work. They all lead to the same answer. All right, let's do this one over here. Again, the way I'm doing it here in the, um, at, the, at the whiteboard might look different to you than the way it's being done in the blue area. I'm going to multiply both sides by minus 1. You get 9x squared plus 21x equals minus 10. Well, what am I going to do? I'm going to do 9x squared plus 21x plus 10 equals 0. I'm going to try to factor it. All right? So someone's going to you can factor that. I'm going to try. I'm going to say 3x and 3x. And I'm going to say 5 and 2. Plus, plus. Let's see if it works. 9x squared. That worked nicely. It always does, by the way. 15 plus 6 is 21x. That worked nicely. And you do get 10. Where are the answers over here? Well, 1 does 3x plus 2 equals 0. When x equals minus 2 thirds. 
or when does 3x plus 5 equal 0? When x equals minus 5 thirds. I like factoring. They're the answers. I'm going to also do the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula, you get a, I'm looking at this, a is 9, b is 21, and c is 10. Okay, let's put it down. x equals, I'm also going to complete the square too, do it all the ways. Uh, let's see, minus b is minus 21, plus or minus b squared, I'll write this on the side for you, 21 squared, well, that's going to be what? 21, and two, 2 times 21 is 42, right? Boy, that's a lot of work. Minus 4 times A, well, A is 9, times C, which is 10. That's going to be 360. Over twice A, which is 18, X equals minus 21, plus or minus, let's see, that's going to give me 81, right? Over 18. You can see how much work this is compared to the factoring. Minus 21, plus or minus 9, over 18. Let's keep moving. And what do you get there? Minus 21 plus 9, which is, uh, let's see, minus 21 plus 9. It's going to be minus 12, 18 or minus, one, minus 21 minus 9 is minus 30, 18. So it pays to reduce things. I can say it's minus 2 thirds, or let's see, minus 5 thirds. Are we getting the same answer? Of course we are. Okay, I can complete the square. And when I do that, you know, you might say, are you, do you need to do it three ways? No, you need to do it the one way you like. But uh, I really do like that factoring if I can factor with my fingers. I'm going to com uh, complete the square right now. So let me see what the original problem was. And that's 9x squared. I'll write it down for you. Plus 21x plus 10 equals 0. I like to have the coefficient on the square term to be 1. So I'm going to divide both sides by 9. 21 divided by 9. I'll write this on the side for you. That would be a 7 uh, thirds x, and then I get 10 ninths, and 0 divided by 9 is 0. I'm going to isolate the constant, I can complete the square, so I'm taking half of the 7 thirds, and square it, now it'll be 49 over 36. That's a lot of work though. This would be x plus 7 sixth squared equals, well, common that would be 36, right? And what do you get? That would be minus 40. That's 9. So x plus 7, 6 equals plus or minus square root of 9, which is 3, and the square root of 6 is 6. So what do you get over here? x equals minus 7, 6 plus or minus 3, 6. Wow. What do you get over here? x equals... Let's see, minus 7 plus 3 is minus 4 sixths, and minus 7 minus 3 is minus 10 sixths. That's an or. What does that reduce to? Minus 2 thirds or minus 5 thirds. And again, lo and behold, we're getting the same answer over and over again. What's the least amount of work? If you can factor, 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 factor. Can't say it enough times. It's a super simple technique. All right, let's take a look at the next one. It says solve the equation, and I'm looking at it, and let's write this down. So 9x squared minus 5x minus 4 equals 0. All right, let's see if we can do it. And yet, I, I wouldn't play too much around with factoring, but it's not working out. Probably you can try something else, but that would be, I'm going to say probably 3x and 3x, right? Let's see. No, that's not going to give it to me, is it? Right, let's try something different. Get my eraser out. And don't be discouraged by trying. And there is a problem with factoring, by the way. 
Let's try something different. I'm going to try four and one. We'll take a look here. I'm going to try this. And does that work? Let's see, 9x squared. That worked beautifully. Minus 9x plus 4 is minus 5x. Yeah, it works beautifully. So what's the answer over here? x is 1. And the other one is going to be x is equal to minus 4 ninths. I find that so much easier, by the way. But someone can say, does it always work? No. Sometimes it doesn't work. So what I want to do is I want to talk about using the quadratic formula. i got to write this down again. We get the same answer, by the way. Don't worry. A is 9. B is minus 5. And C is minus 4. Let's do this. What do you get? X equals the opposite of B, which is 5, plus or minus the root. B squared is 25 minus, well, let's write this down, 4 times the A times the C, which is minus 4, right? Let's take a look at that. You get 16 times 9. I know it's a negative number, by the way. 16 times 9, that's 90 and 54, 144. But it's actually minus a minus, which is plus. It goes on the bottom twice A, which is 18. What do you get? X equals 5 plus or minus the root of 169 over 18. X equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 169 is 13 over 18. I'm going to keep writing this down. We'll get the same answer. Don't worry about that. X equals, well, 5 plus 13 is 18 over 18. Or 5 minus 13 is going to be what? That's minus 8, 18. You're going to get X equals 1. Or, well, look at this to reduce it, minus 4 ninths. Are we getting the same answers? Let me point out what I mean by that. We're getting minus 4 ninths and 1 every single time. All right? Let's do completing the square. Yeah, I know it's a problem, but i got to do it. And I'm going to just take that equation as written. I'm kind of going to jam this in over here. By the way, I realize in my notes I'm doing a little bit differently. You might want to look at that. That's the way Wells would do things. But let me write this down for you. i got to be careful. i got to get room over here. So I'm going to divide through by 9. I'm taking this thing. You're going to get x squared. Um, let's see, minus 5 ninths x equals 4 ninths. I'm going to complete the square, take half of minus 5 ninths, and you would get minus 5 eighteenths, and I need to square that. And it's, it's problematic. There's no doubt about it. So that's going to be 25. And let me do the 18 squared for you. Well, it's going to be 10 times 18 is 180. Uh, let's see. Then you get 80 and 64. Let's see. 2, that's 4, right? 8 and 8, 16, 22, 324. It's a nightmare. All right, it's a lot of work. What do you get? Perfect square now. X minus 5 eighteenths squared. i got to add this together, and it's a problem. There's no doubt about it. So let's see. The common denominator would be 324. So I know i got plus 25. 9 goes into 324. Let me show you that. 3 times, that's 27. That's 54 and 6. 36 times 4 is 144. This would be 169 over 324. What do you get now? x minus 5 eighteenths equals the root of 169, which is 13. And the root of 324, we just multiplied, it's 18, right? So what do you get over here? I'm sorry, it's plus or minus. You get x equals 5 eighteenths plus or minus 13 eighteenths. Let's keep doing it. These numbers look very familiar, don't they? x equals 
let's see, 5 plus 13 is 18 18 or 5 minus 13 is going to be minus, I'm sorry, it's going to be plus 8. I'm sorry, minus 8. I'm sorry, I misspoke. Over 18. What do you get over here? x equals 1 or, and that's going to be minus 4 ninths. Are we getting the same answer? Of course we are, every single time. All right? It gets tedious, though, doesn't it? So I'm going to basically look at them and kind of look at it and just, I don't know, maybe I'm just going to just do the factoring from here on out. I think it's so much easier. I don't want to do it three ways. Let's take a look over here. I'm going to say 8x and x. You get better over time. 2 and 1. Uh, let's see. Minus plus. Let's see if that works. 8x squared minus 16 plus 1 is minus 15. Yeah, it works beautifully. So what's x? It's minus 1 eighth or x is 2. All right. You can use quadratic form or complete square. Whatever you want to uh, do. I kid you not. The answer is not going to change. Let's see if we can do this one over here. And again, I'm not saying it's going to be the easiest thing in the world to do. Whoops, sorry about that. So let's take a look. And I'll do it. What do you get? 2x squared minus 7x plus 3 equals 0. Again, I'm going to attempt to factor it. Again, we've done enough examples of the completed square and use quadratic formula. I just like the factoring. I'm going to say it looks like 3 and 1 minus minus. Does that work? 2x squared Minus 6, minus 1, yeah, minus 7, yeah, I get it. What's well, this? X equals a half, or X equals 3. Super simple. Again, the work over here is all about you doing the uh, completing the square business. And try it. See, how, see, how, see what it's like. I can't say it's the, uh, a bad thing to be doing. I'm just saying you, you got to learn. All right, let me start this one over here. Yeah, you might say it's more challenging. Again, the work here is for completing the square. Uh, let's see, 28x minus 32 equals 0. I'm using the zero product rule. Again, not that it always works, but I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to say 3x and 5x. And I'm going to say 8 and 4. Now, let me see if that's good. 8 and 4. Let's see if I can do it. Let's see, 40 and 12, the difference there would be 28. Let's give it a shot. Let's see if that works. You get 15x squared. You get 40 minus 12, that's 28. And you get minus 32, works beautifully. So what's the answers over here? When does 5x minus 4 equals 0? When x equals 4 divided by 5 or... When does three x plus wait x? I'm sorry. When does three x plus eight equal zero? When x equals minus eight thirds. Let's look at the key. We got over there. How do they do it? Complete the square, as Wells would want you to do it. All right. What's the problem now? Well, you have a problem. The problem is, did you understand what was presented to you? What was presented to you? Completing the square. Quadratic formula, and the zero product rule. They all lead to the same result. What you need to start doing though is practicing. Make sure you have some understanding of what was presented to you, both from the reading and from doing the extra, the examples. Whether you're watching me do the examples or you're doing it on your own, you need to start proceeding forward. What does that mean? Solving equations. How are you going to do that? I'm going to say, again, I would do it by factoring, but you do need to learn how to complete the square. You need to learn that. What else do you need to learn? Quadratic formula. I would try all three on this problem over here, and you should get this answer. 4 or minus 3. Well, what would I do? Factoring first, quadratic formula, complete the square. All roads lead to 4 or minus 3 for this problem over here. This one, what would I do? The zero product rule. What does that mean? Factoring. All right. What else would you do? Completing the square and quadratic formula. All roads should lead to these answers. All right? So forth and so on. Each one of these things should lead to these answers. And there's three ways of doing it now. Solve this one. Let me repeat this. All roads 
should lead to these answers, whether you're using a zero product rule, completing a square, or the quadratic formula, it'll lead to those answers. Of course, unless I made a mistake. Same thing with this one, and the next one, and the next one, but you need to practice. And the next one, yeah, a lot of practice. And the next one, ooh, let me, let me back up a little bit. You're not gonna get this one factored. All right, so, so this is a good example over here. You're not gonna be able to use your product rule on this one over here. And the reason is, you're never gonna get that factored. Not with the techniques you know now. So the zero product rule, which means you take this thing over here and try to factor it, you're just not going to get it. All right? So I'm going to say completing the square or quadratic formula will lead to this answer over here. You should now notice that this answer over here has a radical in it. And they, they have much more difficult to do. All right? This one has a complex number in it. This one over here, you'll be able to factor it. This one factors. It's not, it's not bad. What do I mean by that? If you wrote this as 36x squared plus 3x minus 5 equals 0, you'd be able to factor that problem over there. Look at number 11. Number 11, you can also factor that one. This factors over here and lead to those answers. Over here, this one also, if you rewrote it as 30x squared minus 37x, plus 10 equals 0. It also factors. It'll lead to this answer over here. This over here, I recommend you simplify both sides first. Um, once, you, once you do that, you should be matching the equations I'm getting, and you should be able to complete the square on it, but you're not going to factor it using finger numbers. This one over here, a little more difficult. It's a cubic problem, but expand it. You'll eventually get to a quadratic in the end, and it'll be a simple quadratic. Right? This one over here, expand it. You'll eventually get to a quadratic, and it'll be a simple quadratic. All right? This one over here, eh, you can say it's nightmarish, but it'll eventually simplify to a nice quadratic. It really will. It's over here. All right, nice simple problem. This one over here, a little more complicated, but the bottom line is going to simplify. Here's the deal, though. It's getting more difficult. You're going to get more difficult answers, right? All I can say is try. We put it on a lot of work for you. You may have to look at our work over here. Again, another tough, tough one, try. All right, it says bit nightmarish. Again, Sage, let me point out what that is, Computer Algebra System, CAS for short, it's free. Go to that website. You can either download the application or use the interactive web-based application and type some of this code in, see what happens. It does a really nice job. They're really simple problems to do, at least the machine. And someone says, how did the machine get to the ability to do that? Somebody actually coded it. They actually code what we know. All right, probably the most simplest thing a machine to do would be the quadratic formula. Super, super simple. All right, quadratic formula for a machine to do. For humans, kind of tedious. All right, but anyway, I do want to point out if you need to reach out to me. My name again is Ron Bannon. My email address is Bannon, which is B as in boy, A N N O N. Whoops, went too quick there. N dot US. That's my email. When you reach out to me, please. What are we looking forward to hearing from you? I made an error. Make an error? Please let me know. You'll get credit in the notes. Thank you for paying attention.